Hello, and welcome to Part 47 of the Issues 90 Use Blender 2.7. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use alpha channels or transparency in image textures in Blender Cycles. For this video, I'm going to be using a leaf picture that I found at www.cgtextures.com. If you haven't been here before, it's an excellent resource for CG artists or animators who are texturing objects in a 3D environment in possibly Blender. It has thousands of pictures. Here I've navigated down to the nature section and I've navigated to the tropical section and tropical leaves and I'm going to be using this picture right here. If you haven't used cgtextures.com, you do have to sign up for a membership. There is a free membership, which is what I'm using here, which gives me access to the lower resolution images. It's still pretty good. This leaf texture is 1024 by 610 pixels, which is plenty big for this purpose. It's just a small leaf probably in a scene. Um, I've downloaded this picture, so if you want to get it, it will be linked to that in the description area below. This image texture is not a JPEG file. JPEG is a format of image. It's the most common format of image on the internet. And it's great, but this is a PNG image. And the benefit here is PNGs are lossless. They are a compressed image format, but they're very, very good quality. They're a little bit larger in file size than JPEGs. But the real benefit here is that they have an alpha channel. They have transparency built in, which is what this checkerboard pattern you're seeing is behind the leaf. This means that if we can use that image or alpha channel in Blender, we can have just the leaf with nothing around it, no white or black square around the leaf. If you want to go ahead and download this exact image texture I'm using, you'll find a link to that in the description area below. Let's go ahead now and jump into Blender. I'll click on this splash screen to get rid of it, and I don't need this default cube, so I'll press X and click on Delete. I'm going to add, so Shift A, I'm going to add a mesh plane. So Shift A and mesh plane. Uh, this plane is one polygon. It has four vertices and four edges. That's great, but I want to scale it out to be the same aspect ratio as the image texture, which is more long and narrow. It's not a square image. So I'll press um, 7 to go to my top view and 5 to go to my orthographic view. Of course, you can use your view menu down here and go to uh, view persp ortho to switch to orthographic and then top here. I'm going to use my scale gizmo down here and stretch out my plane on the X or red axis. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I think the image is about like that. I could change it later. This is totally fine. Let's go ahead and add a material to this object. I'll go back to my move gizmo just because. And to add a material to this object, I'll go to my materials tab in the properties window and click on new. And so now I have a very, very simple diffuse, which just means a simple color material. And it's almost white, I think. It's just 80% white. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, actually. But let's go ahead now and open up a new window. We need a node editor window. Now, if you haven't seen my video on my introduction to uh, materials and using nodes in the Blender Cycles Render Engine, I'll put a link to that on the screen right now. Please do watch that to understand fully more slowly. I explain in that video how to use nodes and add materials to objects. It's very important that you have a basis in knowing how to use nodes and adding materials and cycles before you continue with this video. Uh, let's go ahead and divide this large window into two. I'll grab the little triangle area up top and I'll drag that down. And we're going to change this new window into a node editor window uh, right there. Of course, you click this little button and change the window type. Every material with this object selected, we have a material on it. Every material has a material output. And in our case, it's just a simple diffuse material or it has a diffuse shader, which is this node right here. To bring in the image texture, I have to add a new image texture node and plug it into my diffuse uh, shader. So I'll press Shift A and with my mouse, of course, in this window, Shift A, texture and image texture. So it's right there. Once I click image texture, it adds that new node. I can click to make it or position it right about there. And I'll plug the color from the image texture, which we haven't opened yet, into the color of my diffuse shader. So I've plugged that in to create the attaching noodle. I'll click open. And this is where I'll open on my desktop. I've got a folder that contains the Leaf Tropical 0218 underscore 2 underscore S PNG image file. It's 1.1 megabytes, which is quite large because it's a PNG image file. That's OK, though. I'll click on Open Image. So now it knows that it's there. But it's not showing up on our plane. What is going on? Well, for one, we're only looking at this 3D viewport 
through solid viewport shading. Down here, if I change my viewport shading from solid to material, we should see image textures, but we don't. The plane is still just black. Why is this happening? Well, the Cycles render engine needs to have all meshes be unwrapped. We have to unwrap this plane um, in order to actually see any image on it. So what I'll do actually is I'm going to make this node editor window into two windows. I'll split it in half by grabbing this little triangle area and dragging it over. I'll change this new window. In fact, I'll press N to hide that side panel and again over to here I'll press N as well. Let's change this window to a UV image editor window. This is where we can look at images. We've actually already brought in, again, it's right there, UV image editor window. We've already brought in an image, so we can actually see it in this window now. If I click on this little image icon, I can get a list of all the images that I'm working with right now uh, that I've opened or looked at in this Blender file. In this case, we only have one open. It's that one right there. I can scroll to zoom in and out. What we have to do here is first apply the scale of the image or the uh, plane rather or the uh, flat mesh here that we uh, have scaled a few minutes ago. So with this mesh selected, I'll go to object and apply, apply the scale. If we don't do this step, if we don't say object apply scale, when I go to unwrap this plane, it'll just unwrap to its original aspect ratio or original size, which was a square, which will not work. So with the mesh selected, object, apply, scale. Now that that's applied, I can press tab to go into edit mode. And then with everything selected, I'll press A and A to make sure everything is orange. I can press U and select unwrap from the UV mapping menu. So I'll click on unwrap which will unwrap this plane up here into the UV image editor window. And as you can see, I don't quite have the aspect ratio correct. So what I'll do is I'll make this uh, window a little bit wider so I can see my different selection modes. Uh, by default, it's on uh, vertice. I'll switch over into edge select mode. So now I can select any of these edges. And I'm gonna grab this edge and just drag it down to make it the right size. So I'll press G with that edge selected, and then I'll press X because side to side is X, and of course up and down is Y. And I'll just drag that over to read about there. And if I really feel picky, I can take um, this edge in my mesh and drag it over as well to make the image a little bit longer. Um, I'm not too worried about it. It's just a leaf. It's not anything that's really critical that to be not stretched in my uh, animation or my scene. Okay, so I've uh, selected that edge and I've dragged it over. I can press tab to go back into object mode and I have a mesh plane with a picture of a leaf on it. If I press F12 or go to my render tab and I press render, great, I've got a leaf, it looks perfect, I'm done. Obviously not. Obviously we still have this black area around the leaf because our texture, our material does not know about the alpha channel built into my PNG yet. To make that all happen, I have to add a few more nodes. So I'm gonna kind of organize these again. I'm gonna make that UV image editor window a bit smaller. What I have to do here is actually bring in a new kind of shader. It's called the transparency shader. So what I'll do is I'll press shift A and I'll add a new shader and it's gonna be a transparent BSDF shader. And so I'll click on it and I'll put the new node right above the diffuse shader. If you're thinking that we have to use a mix shader, you're absolutely right. We have to mix these two shaders together and then make the alpha channel of the image texture work with that so that the alpha only cuts out this black area around the leaf. In fact, I'll press escape down here to escape from that rendered image and I'll zoom on in on the uh, image texture or the actual 3D object. Let's go ahead in this node editor window and press shift A and I'll add a new shader, a new mix shader. So I'll click on mix shader drag it into my noodle there. And I'm gonna connect the transparent shader to the other input. So this mix shader, it takes our two materials or two shaders here and it combines them together at a factor of whatever we decide. So if this is now all the way at zero, uh, with this one plugged into the bottom one, in fact, what I'll do is I'll reorganize these. It uses entirely the uh, top shader or the top input at factor zero and the bottom one at factor one. It's important here, I mentioned this earlier, 
that for a transparent shader, you have to have the color set to entirely white. If it's down by default at 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, make sure your RGB values are all set to one or you drag this up to one and make sure it's totally white. Otherwise, it won't be uh, perfectly transparent. Next, we have to plug in the alpha channel from our image texture into the factor of our make shader because we want to use the alpha channel, the mask, the black area around the leaf, we want that to be what it uses from this transparent shader and use the white area or the solid area from the alpha channel um, to where we actually show the color of the leaf. So this is very easy, it sounds complicated. I'll drag the alpha output and I'll connect it to the factor of the mix shader and if I switch over into render viewport shading, ta-da, it's done. Now obviously it's the opposite of what we want. Right now it's cutting out or it's making transparent the leaf section and it is showing the part of the image that is the supposed to be the transparent part. So it's doing the opposite. How do we fix this? Well, I can just switch these two inputs on the mix shader. We obviously have these reversed, so I'll just drag that to that one and they'll switch. So now I have a picture of a leaf um, on my plane, although I can only see the shape of the leaf and the rest is see-through. It works perfectly. My scene is now pretty much ready to go. I just, I think it's too dark, so I'll turn up my light in the scene. I'll make another 3D viewport window and I'll grab my lamp and go to my lamp tab in the properties window and I'll click on use note so I can turn that value up. Maybe I'll make an area lamp and maybe I'll make it our square area lamp and I'll make it larger and I'll turn my value or the strength of the lamp up to 500. So there we have it. We have an image texture of a, a leaf put onto just one polygon plane and we've used a few nodes to put that on there with the alpha channel. What I'll do here is I'll leave the nodes up on the screen for a few moments but that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.